السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول النبي الكريم. For those before counting, today is our third night of Ramadan. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having given us another opportunity to listen to the Quran on this glorious night. Alhamdulillah, we finished Surah Al-Baqarah, the longest chapter, and now we started another beautiful chapter with full of knowledge, wisdom, and hikmah, Surah Al-Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. Allah is the one who is the Lord and there is no one like him. He is hayy. He is living, ever living, and who lasts forever the most powerful. Allah then testifies about the book that has been revealed, the books that have been revealed in the past, all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even this book, Allah testifies, Nazzala alayka al-kitab bil We send this book with justice, Musaddiqan lima bayna yadayh. And it testifies to the previous books as well. وَأَنزَلَ التَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ the, 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 the books that have been revealed before, the Injil, the Torah, and all other books. And further testifies about the Qur'an itself. That Allah has sent these ayat, مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ Ayat that are firm. There is no doubt in it. They are firmly established. And they come from the mother of all books, Hunna Ummul Kitab, the book that is present with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it originates from there. So the Quran, the Torah, the Injil, they all come from Ummul Kitab. And Allah further explains that these ayah for the believers, it opens their hearts and they get guidance from it. Hudamun wa shifa lil ladheena amanu hudamun wa shifa in Surah Fussilat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. But at the same time, those who have a crooked mind, when they read it, they don't get anything from it. And they rather go into tangential areas which Allah has also kept as a fitna for those who want to fall into that fitna. The believers will say, when asked about all these tangential uh, ayahs which are kept that way, Rabbana, Amanna, we believe in everything. Kullum min indi Rabbina, all of that has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe in it whole and soul. And make dua, Rabbana la tuzak qulubana ba'd iz hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Oh Allah, I have believed, may keep my heart pure that I don't get disturbed with all the disturbance that goes around, all the distractions that go around, and grant me one good children, righteous children, from your mercy, in the Wahhab, you are the one who is the giver of all things, most liberal. Rabbana, inna ka jami'un nasi yawmin la riba O Lord, you're going to raise all of us one day, and there's no doubt about it. In Allah la yukhifil mi'ad, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentions about this world. He has created it. He has adorned it. He has made it beautiful. I'm sure we all appreciate all the good things in life. When you have some time, you want to go on vacation. And where do you want to go? Somewhere nice. 
something beautiful. You want to enjoy. You want to go home in the evening for iftar. You want to enjoy a good meal. And Allah has made it. Look around. So many things. Good clothes. Nice cars. Everybody likes it. And Allah has made it. Look at the colors. All the different colors. Whether you look up the sky or you look up on the, on the water or the ground. Everything has a beautiful color. Just look at the, the leaves. The green leaves that will start coming out. Beautiful. Allah has created it nice. And not only has He created it so beautiful, He has made it very attractive. And especially certain things are super attractive. And Allah says, Allah has put the love of desires of women, children, loads of gold, silver. We all, all like, like love money, don't we? We like to have some good money, some good hard cash, fluid cash so we can spend. Everybody loves it. Everybody loves to have more children. Everybody loves women. These are the things that Allah has put that love in our hearts. Some people love well-bred horses. Some people who are, who are into farming, they love all the livestock. Or some people love farms. This is love that comes. Or some people like houses, good, nice houses. And Allah says, all of this is mata'u al-hayati dunya this is the provision of this life. And Allah says, can I tell you something better than that? Better than all of this put together? Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ For those who really fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has kept something special for them. إِنَّ رَبِّهِمْ جَنَّاتٌ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْمَنْهَا For them, it's better than that is the various gardens, Jannah, so many gardens of lions, scared paradise, so many, and it's special for them, and they will stay there forever, they will have spouses who are clean, and what it won in Allah, plus the pleasure of Allah. Because if you get the pleasure of Allah, you've got, got it. Because once you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says you can get whatever you want. We have whatever you want, whatever your mind can think of, you ask, once you get in, you'll get it. And Allah says, even more I have kept. The mind has not seen, the eyes haven't seen, the ears have not heard of such a thing, and I have kept it special for those who trust in me. Those who believe in me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes who these people are. Who are they? One, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first, Rabbana innana amanna. O Allah, we have believed in you. We have put all our trust in you. Fawfirlana dhunumana. O Allah, forgive us. Forgive our sins. Waqina thabal nar. O Allah, save me from the fire of hell. Then Allah describes further these people's characteristics. Pay attention and may all of us be or have these characteristics. as those who are with patience, who practice patience. was those who are true to their word. You make a promise, don't break it. was wal munfiqeen and those who give in charity. And the fourth, interesting, the, the, the fourth is those who are those who are asking for forgiveness in the time of support. The early hours of the morning, you stand, everybody's busy eating, or everybody's busy, or somebody else may be busy sleeping. These people who fear Allah, they are awake. They have one thing. They are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. My dear brothers, nations before us have gone. And they believed like the way we believe. And then they assumed, now that they have believed, 
it is obligatory and also billah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us Jannah. No such thing. Unless you fulfill your promises, don't expect such a thing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or the Ahl Kitab felt that, well, you know, if I do some mistake, um, I'll get into fire, the fire of hell for a short period. Then I'll get into Jannah. And many Muslims think in the same way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no. That they believe that we will get into the fire only for a short period. And they have deceived themselves in a matter of their religion. And Allah says, No. How will it be on the day that we will gather you? On a day that there is no doubt about it. And everyone will be given whatever he has earned. So regardless, just the label Muslim is not sufficient. Just the label that I'm a follower of Muhammad وسلم, is not sufficient. Faith is important. And the tenets of the faith, like I said, patience, being true to your word, asking for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following whatever Allah has said, whether it is iqam salah whether it is ita zakah these are integral parts of your faith, not just lip service. And then, this chapter tells us the story, the true story of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And just before Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, because these two stories are kind of one and the other, because it is about the story of Yahya alayhi salatu wasalam and then the story of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. This may, this is not the time to go into the details. I ask that you read. Last year we had covered that part where miraculously how Isa alayhi salatu wasalam was created. And then he comes with very, very clear signs. Right after birth, he starts talking. At a young age, Allah had given him the power where he could, with clay, make the shape of a bird. He would blow into it, bithnillah, that would become a live bird. A dead person would wake up. What kind of signs? And yet, people recognized that there was a portion who disbelieved. After recognizing, after looking at the clear sign of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then calls the Ahl Kitab. The story is about Ahl Kitab, about Isa alayhi salatu was salam, and addresses the people of the book and asks them to come towards Islam. Because each nation prays about its own self. The followers of Jesus prayed about their own self and they say, We worship Jesus. In the same way, the Yahud prayed on themselves and they like to keep the religion for themselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wait a minute. What about Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam? Because all of them, the one thing common is Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. And what is well established, even in their books, he was not among the idol worshippers. He was someone who purely worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيٌ وَلَا نَسْرَانِيًا He is neither from the Yahud nor from, from the Nasrani, which is the followers of Jesus. وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا He was someone devoted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was a Muslim. وَمَا كَانَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ No question, he was not from the idol worshippers. So the call is, let's follow the way of Ibrahim والسلام, let's worship the God of Ibrahim Allah testifies further that among the Ahl Kitab, there are moderates and there are extremes. They are all not the same. لَيْسُ سَوَاب مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Among the Ahl Kitab, there is a portion there are among them who read the book 
and who spend time in prayer, who give in charity. And Allah says, whatever they have done in the past, that is not going to be disregarded. Allah will take that into account. But bear in mind, at this time, part of your faith it is integral that you believe not just in one prophet but all the prophets including Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then further Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala explains and addresses the Ahli Kitab the arguments this is not the time the arguments are phenomenal but Allah gives uh, just one argument Allah says do you think a man would come sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma kana li basharin an yu'tiyahu Allah al-kitab wal-hikma Allah gave someone hikmah, gave the book and you think he's going to tell you to worship me and in words his own self or will he tell you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you think he's going to tell you to start worshiping the malaika no way what are you talking about and even to this day my dear brothers if you open the Bible, you will not find ever where Jesus himself says, I am God, worship me. And bear in mind, the Bible, their own admission, has been written and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten. They have changed it again and again and again. They have acknowledged themselves. This is the James Version. This is the 13th version or 14th or 15th edition it keeps changing and they admit themselves that this is not the original language of Jesus this is not the original teachings but they try to say that well the Bible is in them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it very clear that Islam is the only religion that will be accepted Allah is not going to accept any deen other than Islam. And the one who takes something else, he's going to be a loser on the Day of Judgment. The second half of Al Imran, which inshallah our Shaykh is going to recite, now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Muslimin and says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in tuti'u fariqan minal ladheena hootu al-kitab yamudduukum ba'da imanikum kafirin. If you start following the Al-Kitab, if you start following their ways, then eventually you will turn away from your religion. Be careful. Allah says, Wa tasimu bihablillah. Hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And don't get into arguments like the previous nations did. This is a great problem that we are seeing today. The last 100, 200 years, ever since the fall of the Ottoman Empire, we as a community, number one, have become leaderless. Number two, even if there's a leader, nobody wants to follow the leader because everybody wants to be the leader. Everybody wants to be the president. We can't work together. I'm seeing this now. We are trying hard, but there's a change. We are moving towards the better. That's a story for another day. But the truth is, whether it's a masjid, whether it is an organization, we fail to band together and make one leader and follow him. It's a shame. But it, we need to recognize this. We need to learn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing this and say, get together. Don't get into arguments. Make a decision and move on. Don't become like those who kept fighting among themselves and they lost their way. Remember the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after you became Muslim and Allah put love in your hearts and each other and He guided you towards our deen. The next section deals with a war, which is the second battle that was fought in the history of Islam. And we have gone into the details, inshallah we're already close to time. Um, inshallah we'll talk about it again because that reference keeps coming.
because this was very briefly two lines, a situation where following the battle of Badr, the people of Mecca who had lost now started to prepare for another war. And when they came in much larger numbers, even Rasulullah was well informed and they started to prepare, unlike Badr, which was rather sudden, and people had to gather helper skelter and whatever little army and that was just 300. But this time they had advance notice, so they started to prepare for the battle. Rasulullah, there are so many um, uh, stories of hikmah that we can take, but uh, briefly Rasulullah gathers the Sahaba. And what he does, again, something for us to learn, he did not say, I'm going to tell you this, and you do this, this, and this. He gathered the Sahaba. He took their opinion. He did mashura. And rather than enforcing his opinion, he took the majority opinion of the Sahaba and applied it. I'll close with this. And the opinion was, one portion wanted to go out and fight the Kuffar. He said, we are Muslims, we believe in Allah. Allah will support us, let us go out and fight them. Another portion, including the opinion of the Prophet was, we'll stay right in Medina, we will defend Medina from inside. But because everybody wanted to go out and fight, most of them, because during Badr, they were not able to participate, they all decided to go, and they did. Initially, they were winning, but we, have, we know about the story of how a group started to fight among themselves between the two valleys because Rasulullah chose a valley behind which there were mountains. The mountain of Quhad was on their back. So that way the enemy couldn't attack from behind, so they chose that place to fight. But between the two mountains, there was one narrow place, a narrow alley. So he took 50 archers, he chose and he told them, you're going to stand there and protect us. No matter what happens, even if you find birds eating the flesh, our flesh, you're not going to move from that place, you're going to stay right there. The battle started. Before even it had started, the Kuffar had started to run away. And it was almost, the battle was won. And they started to collect booty the spoils of war. While they were busy, they were looking, the 50 archers in the back, they said, hey, the battle's done, there is booty here, let's go collect it. The 50 archers also had a Amir, this was the Sunnah of the Prophet Whenever he made a group, he would make a leader of that group, no matter small or big. The leader of the, that group said, no, you're not gonna move. Then they started to argue between themselves. No, 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 Rasulullah said this, but he meant that when we are in a situation of war, right now the war is over, we're going. So they argued among themselves, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this clearly. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise was true. And you were killed, basically winning until until you started to fight among yourselves and you crossed those limits and you lost the war. There is more to talk about it, but a reminder and a lesson for us, unless we band together, regardless of what our differences are, we will be losers because the hand of Allah is on the jamaah.